Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tour, we're going to take a look at a print in place, 3D printed hinge. So, the hinge in CAD is set up as components so that we can kind of simulate how the hinge works. So, you can get an idea of how many degrees of angle you can adjust the thing. Uh, since this is a print in place, that means all of the hinge, the door, and the frame is all printed at the same time, flat on the bed. So, to do that, the main issue that you're going to run into with 3D printing is tolerances. If the tolerances are too little, meaning the space between faces that intersect, then you're going to have some fusing. That means you're going to print this out and you can't open it because the layers are too tight together. So really cool thing is to set up user parameters. If you're a programmer, you probably know what a variable is. It's basically a variable. You give it a name. Let's say it's the pin height. And then you give it a value, meaning a number. Is it one millimeter, two millimeters? I use that to create a, uh, a variable called gap, which I use to give me a little bit of clearance between the edges. So since I have that set up, why not set up other aspects of the hinge? Let's say the width, the pin diameter, and the pole diameter. Um, so by, able, by being able to set up their, your uh, parameters so that they're applicable in the extrusions and different features, you can make this parametric model that scales and the features kind of flow with it. Very, very cool uh, technique. This is a free download um, that you can get the link in the description of this video. And uh, there are some little things that you want to look out for whenever you're using parametric values, uh, user parameters. You want to really inspect your design as you're changing values. Some features might break. For example, here, I can just add another one called the framing of the door, and that'll give me a little bit more padding so that the whole uh, widget can be printed. So that's the hinge. Uh, we'll take a look at it in the overhead. Um, you could be repurposed on a different machine. Let's say I wanted to print this with a 0.8 nozzle or a one millimeter nozzle. I could go into Fusion and just update all the numbers, make everything double the size, and get a, a, something that would work with a bigger tool head. So here's a close-up look of the parts. This was printed in Filamentum's Black Galaxy PLA filament. And it, it prints in place. So that means this whole area here, the nice shiny bottom, that's the very first layer that it prints. And you can see that there's just a tiny little bit of gap in between the, the, the door and the door framing. Another little bit is this little clip here that kind of had that keeps the thing from just falling out. So if you wanted to make something like a case that had a battery door and you wanted to be able to get the battery out, you can use your thumb, click that open, and then you can access your thing. Remember, this is parametric, so it's not gonna stay this size. This is this is just a little test print, so. Is that the smallest you can get it? You know what, that was the goal. It was like, how small can I get this thing? So I started with very little values. Wow. I bet if I were to exclusively use the 0.2 nozzle, I bet mm. I could make this like a, like a M3 size, because right now it's M6, which is mm. metric. So it's a six millimeter diameter pole. <laughs> I bet I can do half that, because I mean, that just makes sense. Half of 0 0.4 is 0.2, isn't it? <laughs> so there you go, that's my hinge. Um, there are lots of hinges on Thingiverse. Ain't nothing special about it. <laughs> it's, not gonna it's parametric. That's cool. It's pretty cool. Also, it's when I was doing CSS uh, as a web developer, one I had a thought. You know, it'd be cool if we could, because as you make uh, adaptive designs, you would you would make some CSS that would like mm -hmm. kind of your layout would basically flow, flow with, with the browser window. And I feel like that's kind of like what the thought was. Like maybe one day in the future we'll be able to apply this adaptive design to real world things. And yet wow. here we are doing it Yay. with a little door hinge. Super awesome. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Coupon codes, AstroPixel. I'll have to save the link. This thing is too fun. I can't even look yeah, at it's it. Fun. <laughs> yeah, it's too Unplug it. Get this thing out of here. Uh, this thing is too cool. Put it face down. AstroPixel. Get your coupon. That was this week's Layer by Layer. Remember, you can get all of the 36 Infusion parts are compatible with all of your favorite CAD Take a look programs. This, this is PID, I don't know. It's the Pi Bonnet to the LoRa Radio and OLED Bonnet for the Raspberry Pi. That's so this is the latest uh, and greatest uh, LoRa Radio module. 
It has a lot of different flavors and packages, but this one's for the Raspberry Pi. It's got that OLED on it and three buttons. This was last week's um, Hero featured product. So we made a CAD thing for it. So if anybody wants to use it in a project and they need a drawing of it, here it is. It's got a nice header on it. It is still, it, wait, did I say it's still in stock? Because I meant it's not in stock, sorry. Yeah, let me check, check that out. Sign up for the notification so we know that people want more, so we can make more. Do you know that? That's how we know. <laughs> so please uh, put your email in there. We won't spam you, I swear. You can swear. Anyway, CAD parts, they're there on the GitHub. There's a link in the description of this video in every single video that we do.